Hello viewers, Flash Motorsport here and welcome to Spa. Now a few things I've noticed over the course of the last few months is how race length dictates how your race is going to be. What I mean is, if you're on a short race, you seem to be in a massively chaotic environment, whereas on a medium length races, it seems to be far, far cleaner. Now there could be a few reasons for that is, A, the fact of short races are generally very short. So everybody is massively competing to try to get to the front of the pack as quickly as possible rather than holding off like you do more in a medium race, wait for everything to settle down and then start making your move. Or it could be a factor of a skill issue where some drivers are not as skillful as others so they prefer the shorter races. Or it could be just because rammers prefer the shorter races cause as much chaos as they can leave and are able to jump straight into another lobby which swiftly leads me on to the matchmaking system now why isn't the matchmaking system more reliant on skill rating and safety rating rather than filling the lobbies because that's what it seems to feel like that lobbies are prioritized to be full rather than prioritized to have a better skill rating throughout the lobby so you have a lobby dedicated to s rating or a rating or skill level above 4500 or you know things like that it just seems to be that one minute you are actually having an extremely good battle with a bunch of players or the lobby is very competitive and the next race you could have where you just absolutely decimate the whole lobby and you're out on your own uh, 10 15 seconds ahead there's no reason to say why you're that far ahead because if that player or the matchmaking lobby has a skill rating of let's say 4500 which is quite a good skill rating then you would expect everybody to be on the same level of pace and skill as yourself. You know, that's to be expected. But if you're out there 15 seconds ahead of somebody at the end of a medium race, then that something's not right with the skill rating or the matchmaking in the system. You're just basically dumped into a lobby that needs you in there to make it look fuller than what it already is. Which is why we have so many issues with rammers and not so courteous driving which one could argue that it's creating a negative effect on player experience i mean i've had some absolutely banging brilliant races when it's just four or five of us in the lobby rather than 20 because those players were extremely skillful and to be fair i mean as sometimes i've lost sometimes i've come middle sometimes I've come first but the battle between us has absolutely been intense whilst also being very clean at the same time because our skill levels were pretty much on par whereas if you're on a 20 uh 20 player race and you know you come to turn one and you get absolutely plowed by 19 cars behind you because their skill rating is much lower than yours or their safety rate is much lower than yours absolutely destroys your experience because you just get absolutely annoyed about it you'll probably get a penalty for it which then also exacerbates the situation you know imagine coming out of being plowed by 19 cars behind you with a two or, th or even four second penalty for something that was totally out of your control it just ruins your enjoyment in general of the game and i think that's what turn 10 really needs to focus on for the next update really is try and fix this matchmaking system to make it more reliable and more consistent rather than filling the holes let me know what you think down in the comments below whether you think the matchmaker system needs a good overhaul and take on board some of the comments i've made if there's any comments that you'd like to add to it let me know down in the comments below as well and let me know if you've also noticed any difference between short and medium races and the quality of the race in itself in general I mean, there's other games out there I've played, such as a set of Corsa, a set of Corsa Competizione. I've even raced for low fuel motorsport. And their matchmaker system is absolutely brilliant because they match you on your safety rating and they match you on your skill rating, as well as your pace that you set during qualify. So if you set, let's say on this track right now, I've got a best of a 238.7. Let's say I did a 240. I'm matched with people that would do between a 238 and a 242. So then, whilst I'm in the middle, I get to learn from the car in front, uh, whilst the people behind me get to learn from me to try and become faster themselves. Which has now led me on to the thought I've just had in my head is, why don't we have a new system of matchmaking via your qualifying lap? So instead of being put into a lobby with a load of other people, and then you qualify for that specific lobby, why aren't we not qualifying for the race first, see what time we set and then put in a lobby appropriate to our 
lap pace rating. I mean, a system like that in place can only be a positive, really, because then everybody's matched to a variety of skill that they are at themselves. But as we're coming over towards the start and finish line for the start of lap three, if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Right now, we're in P2 position as we're crossing over to start our third lap. Bravo Kid 1 in P3 has been massively gaining on us throughout the whole of lap 2, which is quite nerve wracking because they are very quick and to be fair I am pushing the MG, I may be going through a bit slow in some places, for example Eau Rouge in front of us now is not my strong point. I find that I get a bit clumsy through here so I do try and keep to the right, barrel it over to the left then I let off as we go through here because I've noticed if I keep the throttle on sometimes the understeer is absolutely incredible. I move over for Bravo Kid to get through. As you can see, they massively gained on me. I am so surprised that they didn't get a bit of aero wash as they were behind me because I massively suffer from understeer when I'm tucked in behind the car going through any form of corner. Even though the downforce on the front is at maximum, I don't know, it could be a skill issue on my part. But as you see, they are pushing up towards Hyundai. I have actually been catching up to Hyundai I'm not too sure, there seemed to be a little more off pace on this lap, but we did manage to set a best of a 235.361, which is brilliant. As we come through this corner, stay on the inside part, see the blue pad start accelerating out the other side and bring it back over to your right hand side. Dab by the brakes again to get the weight on the front wheels and bring it round to your left and come over to your right hand side. You do get a lot of track limit there, just be mindful of where that limit is. Coming down here, you want to see the kerb on the left hand side, just before the kerb starts, dab by the brakes in fourth gear coasting it round as soon as the curb ends start accelerating out the other side and you basically flat out through this next corner keep on your left hand side under the bridge you'll see a curb that's the next braking point down the third gear and bring it over to your right hand side rub this curb a little bit you do get a lot of track limits on the curbs and it does help you rotate the car and as we go through the other side keep again to your left hand side as soon as the curb starts braking again rub this curb and bring it to the outside curb now maximize the track width on this curb here and then bring it round and you can pretty much take this flat out as you go through. As you can see now the MG is trying to make a move on the Hyundai. The fog seems to have lifted and as we're coming under the bridge you want to keep to your left hand side and then bring it back over to the right hand side of the track. Now get your right wheels on the green stuff and keep your left wheels on the tarmac. Cut this corner a little bit, try and rub that inner curb but you can take it flat out if you do clip that inner curb. If you do miss that inner curb, let off the throttle, it more than likely will make it round without going over the track limits. As we're breaking down the second gear, we're going to go for the pits. And this is where the most interesting pit entrance I've ever seen happens. Yeah, I got absolutely plowed into. Now, just to gain that one position, they got a 2.25 second penalty for that one. That was totally worth it, bud. Totally worth it. Coming out of the pits on the other side, got a new set of medium tyres. And this is what I mean about Eau Rouge. I do, like I say, let off, try and keep the weight on the front wheels. Because I find the car on the stairs quite a bit when I'm tucked in behind somebody. Obviously, the person uh, in P1 now doesn't have that same issue. Seeing that is the case, it's obviously an issue on myself as a driver rather than the vehicle itself. I can only guess. Breaking at the 100 board down to third gear and tucking it over the curb on your right hand side. Now, as we come over to the curb on the left hand side, you can really abuse the track limits here. Get it right over onto that blue and then keep over to your right hand side through here and start accelerating down the hill. Looking out for the curb to start again on your left hand side, that's your next breaking point. Back down to second gear, rubbing these pads on the inside. As soon as you get this pad here on your right, start accelerating out the other side and bring it back over to your right hand side. Dab with the brakes to get the weight on the front wheels again and then flat out down here. As we're trying to look for a move on the Hyundai because it's the most annoying sound in the world, we do look out for the curb on the left hand side, braking, letting it coast round and then start accelerating out the other side. And you're pretty much again flat out through here. Jumping ahead to the last lap as we come round through here, we did manage to overtake the Hyundai. They are now three and a half seconds behind me. Bravo Kid, that uh, was in the MG, is now seven seconds ahead. And I have a new tailgater coming up in P3 called Max Philippe 2995, which I do not want them to overtake. I want this to P2 position. I'm going to hold on to this P2 position as much as I can. As you can see, it has got a little bit darker, but the fog has lifted. Coming around here, like I say, I'll go over the track limits again. But luckily enough, I don't get a penalty for that one. And that is a place where I do usually, if I'm going to get a penalty, that is the place I get the penalty. It's either in that corner there, or it's through this corner coming up now. 
because as I go over to the right hand side, sometimes I go just a bit too far over as I rub the green pad and I get a penalty through that. I still let off coming through here because my tyres are now worn, but keeping to the left hand side, looking out for the marker on the left hand side, breaking down to second gear, diving it up through here, and you can see Max Philippe massively gained on me a little bit there. And I think they did try to do a little bit of a dive bomb, but it failed in the end. We both sort of braked a little bit too late on that one. As we cross over the finish line, we do have P2 position, but we can't end on that. Heading back to Spa for another go. It was one of those races where everything just came together and it just worked perfectly. Except for me, I forgot to hit record after the qualifying lap because I paused it because we had a good bit of time left between qualifying and racing. I paused it and then it wasn't until I gone down the camel straight that I realized uh, that my recording software was still paused. Luckily enough, we were still on the first lap then, so uh, <laughs> we missed like 30 seconds. At the end of qualifying, we do gain P1 position to start off the grid, which is absolutely brilliant. So as we are on the Camel Straight, I do get overtaken by these two players here, Tom264 and Epsilon2428. You see the rest of the cars are catching up to me right now. Luckily enough, the time lost isn't too effective. Um, I managed to gain him back up onto these two here. You see I'm coming in a little bit hot, overdriving a car to try and gain that position back. No harm, no foul, we're still on the track and I think I look good doing it. Breaking down to second gear, as you can see it's much lighter now, the viewing is much better. I get a bit of understeer, a bit of air wash from the car in front. That's what I mean about weirdness of understeer with this MG. This must be something in my tune that I need to change to reduce that lift on the front. Trying to look for a move on this Audi right now. I am catching up to them, but I do not want to try and push a move just yet. I'm going to try it on the next corner, see if they take a little bit wider and I can swoop up the inside and thus gain that position. I'm a bit mindful of that player. I uh, don't want to create any form of contact that I am going to lose out on because the last thing I want to do is have contact A, get a penalty, or B, have weird Forza physics sending me off the track by 32 miles. But I do give up this position. Somehow we get an avoidable contact warning by just the world's tiniest nudge. I force the position here, going up deep on the inside and thus pushing them over a little bit again in that position. Now I just need to get past Tom264 in the goal from front. As you can see, the Audi behind me has dropped by a full second from that corner alone. So maybe they're a bit under pressure with me but i'm making a move on the golf now maximizing that rev range trying to get the revs as high as i can cutting this corner and thus making that move work it's quite careful you've got to be very careful making the move there because the last thing you want to do is go off that track on your right hand side because it really does hammer you on a penalty system through there as we come over the start and the finish line we managed to gain p1 back from when i qualified which is brilliant we're making a substantial lead from them as well. We're now 1.5 seconds away from P2. And hopefully we can extend that further as we go throughout the race. Lap 3, we are now 8.9 seconds away from Tom264. 9.4 seconds away from Epsilon2428. Which is absolutely brilliant. I'm really pushing this car now. The only issue is it's still going through Eau Rouge. I let off. I mean, don't get me wrong. My tyres are a little bit worn now. But I do let off and it's still a little bit clumsy through there and I lose a lot of speed coming out the other side. As you can see, the car's flapping all over the place and I just can't seem to get it right flat out. I'm just going to have to keep practicing and practicing and practicing. Looking out your left hand side for the 100 meter board, uh, which is coming up now, breaking it down to third gear. Bring it over to your right hand side, over the curb we go and bring it back over to the left and rub this curb as much as you can. And then bring it back over to the left some more and back over to the right and rubbing the two curbs. You do get a lot of track limits on the left hand side, so I could have gone through a lot faster. Breaking up the curb starts again down to second gear and rubbing the curb on your right hand side. And then the next pad you see, we start accelerating again and bring it back over to the right hand side. Letting off the power back onto the brakes a little bit, dabbing it down and then coming over to your right and flat out down this hill. Looking out your left hand side for where the curb starts again, just before the curb starts, Dab of the brakes down to fourth gear, bringing it around about 95 miles per hour to 100 miles per hour. And then as soon as you come over to the outside curb, start accelerating for this last part. And you plat pretty much flat out through here. Keep to your left hand side, look for the curb to start, down to third gear. Bring it over to your right hand side, over the curb we go. 
back over to the left hand side and go over to this curb and you come over to the right and you can really abuse this right hand curb some good amount braking as the curb starts on your left down the third gear over this curb and come over as far left as you can here bring it back over to the right and keep your throttle pinned down as you're going through here because you can take it pretty much flat out i did let off a little bit there i got a bit nervous the tires have been a little bit worn coming over to your right hand side you want to cut this corner in front of us here on your left i don't cut it as much as i would like but i'll come over to the right hand side go over here and just go that pixel too wide again which then gives me a 0.4 second penalty absolutely mind-boggling um but it is what it is breaking down the second gear we're going to go through the pits and out the other side and this is where things got a little bit confusing because i thought that we was all on medium tires which it turns out we wasn't due to the fact of when i exit the pits tom and jason are now in front of me tom was the one in the golf and jason i have no idea who jason is uh, jason xbox 7617 obviously has come out of nowhere with the here i do let off because i am on cold tires i don't want to take the chance on cold tires and get another penalty oh wait hold on i'm in p4 position nope take that back i'm in p4 position which means the audi is in p2 position but as you can see i am gaining on them already so we was what 13 seconds ahead before we went into the pits now we're seven seconds behind exiting the pits there's no way they can run throughout this whole race on a set of hard tires about the last lap been absolutely awful to drive so i've tried it. it it just doesn't work but we'll see what their tactic is breaking down to second gear rubbing these in the curbs as you can see on your right hand side second pad in start accelerating out the other side now they're in my view now i'm gonna catch them right up now the three and a half seconds ahead so we're not even quarter of the lap in and i'm already gaining on them which is only good news for me looking at your left hand side for the curb to start again braking letting the coast around about 95 miles per hour i do brush the mud a little bit which is you don't want to do it just uh massively dirty the tires and do not have such good grip coming out the other side but no harm no foul two and a half seconds ahead which means i'm rolling them in catching up can't grumble at that as you can see the audi's in front of me now so that's epsilon 2428 only difficulty we have now is overtaking them now it got me very very careful overtaking them on the back straight because like i say it is a track that you do take flat out and the corners are pretty much flat out and the last you want to do is do it to a breast looking out to the right hand side gonna make that move work come out the corner so much quicker than they did looking for jason xbox 7617 just ahead luckily enough i'm not close enough to be in the slipstream so i can pretty much take this next corner flat out but i have to let off because i totally missed the apex uh yeah i forgot to turn you know it comes in quite handy that when you're racing that you use a steering wheel yeah it's news to me breaking down the second gear definitely got to get past this ion die don't want to be stuck behind that oh well that's done me a massive favor off to the pitch you go so now i've just got to take over tom 264 again which is just ahead of me they've got to be on a hard set of tires even then i thought the golf used to eat through tires has it changed let me know down in the comments below if the golf has actually changed on how the tire wear is because when it first came out it used to absolutely eat through tires so as we're coming down through Eau Rouge luckily enough that the car in front is one second away from me so that means I would hopefully not be caught up in any aero wash and I can pretty much closely take this flat out have the higher speed and I'm really catching up to them now looking to make a move I'm going to go over to the left hand side and just overtake them as beautiful as that and luckily enough I actually these two were very fair um they didn't once at any point try and block me they gave me room and you know kudos to them too because there's plenty of times that you've gone to overtake a car and they've blocked you or they've touched your back end as you're just passing them to basically pit maneuver you and things like that they were very clean drivers and they were very fair so thank you very much for that one now looking at the leaderboard jason xbox is 24 seconds away from me right now and if they're in p4 position nobody's overtaken that is quite a substantial lead on the cars behind so leading back onto what i said earlier as you can see the skill difference or the skill variance is huge i mean i'm so far ahead that i could pull over have a cup of tea and not have to worry for another 24 seconds i mean that's absolutely mental Come on, this matchmaker system is supposed to take skill ratings as a priority rather than filling the lobbies. And it, this is a perfect example of it does not. 
you know, the penalty system is, I don't take no notice of it now. Uh, any drivers have got penalties now because I've got penalties for being touched. Uh, I've touched other people not got a penalty and they've got a penalty. Sometimes I've got absolutely mental penalties for just being a pixel or two over the line things like that so the penalty system is too aggressive at the moment so you can't really judge a driver's ability via the penalty so if you see a person with high penalties it does not mean that they're a rammer or anything like that it just means they've been properly unlucky or someone's whacked on one and created that penalty for that player as well you don't know if they've got hit and got a penalty for avoidable contact even though they had no choice but not to avoid it the system just sucks you can't fix the system by turning up the aggression knob you know it's you, you got to look at the situations and uh, analyze it i mean they said they were talking to other content creators taking in footage from other races and things like that to try and improve the system and all they've done is just turn the aggression dial and the confusion dial up to 10. i mean how can they do that but not fix the ghosting issue it's the perfect example on my race a couple of weeks ago in the bmw where I spat across on the start and finish line and a BMW comes out a ghost in front of me. I mean, why? The BMW is doing like 15 miles per hour. I'm doing 100. Why did the game think, oh, do you know what? It's a perfect time. There's a car plowing up right behind. Let's come out a ghost. And you see it time and time again in other clips uh, across the internet where people are racing down a straight. Person comes out a ghost right in front of them. Nothing they could do. Plow straight into them and they get a four and a half second penalty penalty for avoidable contact how how can that person avoid it when they're doing over 100 miles per hour faster than the person you just took out a ghost and why doesn't the ghost kick in earlier i'm going to keep moaning about it until they fix it but seriously it can't be that hard to look at the situation and go do you know what maybe it's not hand out so many penalties but if we ghosted that car earlier maybe there wouldn't be so many penalties don't know just saying um thought food for thought right there but as you have made it this far into the video, I have created a Discord channel for everybody here. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I don't want to be like every other Discord channel out there. Everybody goes, oh yeah, just another Discord channel. Uh, this one I do hope to be different to everybody else's. Now, with this Discord, you are able to set up private lobby races with other members in the channel. So hopefully then that will create some much cleaner races and more educational races as well. There is a section for tuning setup. So if you have a tune setup that you want to share with everybody, more than welcome to put it on there and get some feedback from everybody else. A racing steward section. So if you have a collision that you are unsure of your fault or somebody else is at fault, or just want to talk about it and let everybody learn from it, put it on there. No one's going to slap on me for it. We just want to look at it, discuss it and go, what could we have learned from that? What could we have ordered differently? There's a place where you can show off your liveries because I know some people are absolutely artists. I can't do it. As you can see from my liveries, they've been uh, pretty rough. So um, there's a place to show off your liveries. There's a place for funny clips. If you see something absolutely hilarious happen, put it on there. Absolutely, we'll have all have a laugh about it. And there's a leaderboard. I've created a little leaderboard so we can all share our lap times, our best lap and our fastest qualify just so we have some competition because not everybody else can get in the same lobby and it's just kind of fun really anyway thank you all for watching and i shall see you all next time link is in the description